Okay. Whew. Almost there. Almost Friday. Whew. Okay, I should work on that assignment I have for tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, didn't really feel like it. Well, let's let's see. Let's see what's rolling on Twitter now, shall we? Huh. Hmm. Interesting. This might take a while. Yeah! Vikings! Assassins! Woo! Yeah! Assassin's Creed Valhalla, baby! Let's go! Now you've seen this little sketch of mine. Yes, I had to pick up Aguilar's Blade because I don't have another one. And I really wanted to do this as a nice breaker for starters. You know, just, just to get us into the mood of the whole Viking assassin aesthetic. Well, hello, hello, my dear friends, my dear viewers, welcome back to the channel. And today, yes, I am back on it. I am back in Assassin's Creed. I wasn't sure if I was going to do another video on it, like ever. The last two videos I did, I, I think I only did two videos on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The other two were fairly well received, I'm not gonna complain, I mean compared to other videos on my channel, they were pretty well received. I was happy with that. Not as much interaction as I would have hoped for, but that's, that's it. Uh, I did one on the Pieces of Eden, if you, if you are not reminded of that, I did one on the Pieces of Eden, and yes, I am going to speak about that in this video, not now, well actually yes, now, let's start, I had, I, I had planned to start on the, on the whole gender choice, but I'm gonna leave the more, you know, fire propellant topics for later in the video. Let's start with the pieces of Eden. Now, I am going to base this video off the deep dive trailer that was released last Thursday and also the few tidbits of information that have been revealed by both the by both the company, Darby McDavid and other and other team members of at Ubisoft and also from the press releases that have been showing around the IGN stuff, the Game Informer, the whole, the other YouTubers covered. I'm not going to use footage of anyone, that's that's for sure, but I'm going just going just along the informations for a bit. And starting, yes, with the Pieces of Eden, what in the actual hell, not to say other things, who thought it was a good idea to spoil the presence of a Sword of Eden, aka Excalibur, in the game. Bear in mind, I was 100% convinced that the sword was going to be there. I was expecting it, and I'm sure most of us were as well. Like, you can't do a game set in... I mean, I guess we can call it medieval, medieval England, and not have... Excalibur there in some way, shape or form. It could have been just a normal sword if this was any other game, but we know that in the Assassin's Creed Mythos we know that Excalibur is a sword of Eden. No problems there. I am completely fine with it. My problem is the trailer just makes a point of showing the bloody sword being held up high by Eivor as if it were nothing. Honestly. Like, sure, they're going on about their trailer all well. You can, you have this fantastic combat system, which is a kind of warm dinner on itself, but you have this fantastic combat system. You can dual wield pretty much anything and use weapons from and gear from different lands, including Dun, 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 dun. The Sword of Eden. And I was like... Okay, first things first. You know, my problem is not so much with the presence of the Beast of Eden. Because as I said, I was expecting it. My problem is that the way they just... 
Mm. They just say it. They just show it, say it, with no explicit context. You know, we knew that back in Assassin's Creed 1, the Apple was going to play. I, I believe we do. I'm not that knowledge. I, I don't have a lot of knowledge in the marketing campaign for Assassin's Creed 1. But, like, I can imagine that from the get-go, and even from... We are introduced to the, to, the, to the Apple pretty early on in the story. I don't think that Excalibur will be the focal point of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and that's the problem with it. Like, not necessarily that I want Excalibur to be the point of the game. That's not it. It's that they're going to relegate a piece of Eden, a bloody piece of Eden, into, I assume, side content, or major side content, just like that. Not to mention the possibility of another piece of Eden that I mentioned in that video that has appeared before in the series and, and has a bloody good chance of appearing now because the mythology allows it. It's the bloody Spear of Eden. Yes. After Excalibur, it's the only one left from both a mythology standpoint and the availability of the type of weapon. There are spears in the game, so... Uh, of course, this is very... This is not a very solid basis to judge the appearance of Gangnia as a Spear of Eden in the game. Especially since we had... We just, we just came out of a very divisive game, let's call it like that. We just came out of a very divisive game whose main gimmicky mechanic was the bloody Spear of Eden. Although a broken Spear of Eden, because why not? It's okay. But, yeah, and then going to Valhalla, the possibility of Eivor being able to dual wield two pieces of Eden like it is nothing, which I assume that's how it's going to work if they have Gungnir in it. Just... I'm glad I'm start I started with this point, because the sheer thought of having Havel running around medieval England with a sword of Eden and a spear in another hand, dual wielding two pieces of Eden, it just... Oh. Like, you can say, yeah, sure, but Rodrigo Borgia also dual wielded two pieces of Eden. He had the staff and he had an apple for like five minutes, but he did. Well, you are right, but also you are wrong. Well, you're not wrong. I just wanted to say that. You're not wrong. You are right. But in that game, in that scenario, having the two pieces of Eden served the purpose. Rodrigo, or whosoever wished to access the Vatican Vault, needed both the papal staff, who was a, which was the staff of Eden, and an apple to access it. That made sense. It was okay. And let us remind that in the days of Assassin's Creed II, our knowledge on pieces of Eden was pretty much unknown. We knew the apples, we knew swords through the glyphs, we already knew that uh, Excalibur was a was a sword, and the sword of Joan of Arc was a, was a sword of Eden as well. And we knew the staff. I don't even know if we knew the shroud by then. I am mostly, I am one hundred percent sure we did not knew the shroud at that point. But I'm not sure, so don't quote me on that. My point being, it just will it will just look ridiculous, but. I, at the same time, I expect Gangnir to be in the game. So yeah, going from the sword and the pieces of Eden, I want to touch upon a little bit of the mythological aspect of this game. Now, it was revealed in the deep dive trailer and in, I believe that IGN be like a Viking series or whatever. I saw the edited gameplay clips at Joe Raptor 
So I didn't I didn't watch the whole thing. I just watched the gameplay, and it was revealed through those two pieces that and plus tweets from Darby McDavid and I believe Raphael Lacoste that Asgard and Jotunheim are going to be visitable places in in Valhalla. They just... They just had to do it, didn't they? They couldn't just leave it quietly and just make some big boss battles like the snake in Assassin's Creed Origins. They had to go and have Eivor like stone dreaming an entire realm just for the sake of having Hearthgard and Jotunheim and Possibly any other of the other seven, six realms, because Midgard is, is Earth. So, what's to stop them from having the, the entire nine realms in the game? Like, look, I understand. It's a Viking fantasy game. They are, they are going for a Viking fantasy. That much is clear. They are not going for assassins. They're going for Vikings. And Vikings means mythology, means Asgard, means Odin, Thor, Fenrir, Jormungandr, Jotunheim, all that and more. And they just had to do it. But why? My pet peeve is that they are doing it to sort of not one up because they're not going to be able to one-up the game I'm, I'm about to mention. But my, my take on it is that they are trying to up themselves to the level of God of War. Like, you know, God of War, the, one, the first one for the PS4, had some of the realms in, in Norse mythology, but they didn't have all of them, and they didn't explore a lot... I mean, they explored a lot, but not... In like the focus of the game, like you had a bunch of lore through Mimir's tales and the the Jotun shrines and whatnot, but they didn't went very deep in showing these characters or these locations. You have Alfheim, Muspelheim, Niflheim, Jotunheim, and Helheim and Midgard as realms, but apart from Midgard, the other ones are not really that massive. So. There's not a lot to show. And I'm not saying that the realms in Valhalla will be the same size as the England map. I God hope no. But they couldn't just limit themselves to the creatures. They had to go. And not to say, but those bloody Jotun, they look silly as hell. I'm not dissing on whoever designed the characters. I'm sure that that gave them a lot of work to do. I do not envy that work. I couldn't do a better job if I wanted to, but... I mean, seriously, could you not have spiced it up the design a bit? Like, had some, I don't know, some... some details to the body. It's just bland, hairless blue dudes... just with armor. Like... I know that they're saying, oh, this is how Eivor imagines them and whatnot. This is not an accurate representation because, of course, these things are in the people's imaginarium. So, Eivor is imagined this. Bloody hell, if my mythology had a race of frost giant peoples that are supposed to bring the end of times, you bet your ass I would imagine them a lot more terrifying than that. <laughs> like... They are the guys who will bring the end times in Norse mythology, sort of, not just them, but they will be the force that fights against the Aesir gods, the Jotun. So, you could have made them a little bit more terrifying, I imagine. I mean, I don't know, like... And also, there's apparently an image floating about of Fenrir, I'll try to have it on screen sometime. And then there's that... That beast that comes from the fog in the deep dive trailer that 
we don't know if it's Fenrir, but it looks like a bird, not so much as a mammal. It has a, a long snout that could be a beak. I just hope that's not your Moongander, because that doesn't look anything like a serpent. And honestly, I don't know if they're gonna have your Moongander in it, because, you know, again, giant snake, boss battle, eh, they might not want to go back to that. So, I just have to say that I'm a little bit frustrated. I mean, we cannot speak for the entirety of the game, of course. I know they said that you'll be visiting these places as part of an hallucination by a some sort of concussion made by the seer of the Raven's clan, Volca. Now, that's all well and good, but I just we need to see how it plays off, but honestly, so far I'm not seeing the potential in it. Like and then again Going back to the, to the pieces of Eden, I think that that's how Gungnir will end up being in the story. Not that Eivor will go into one of those visions and return spear in hand, no. But I think that through those visions, Eivor might be led towards the, the spear. And also, I think, and if I remember correctly, when I did my pieces of Eden video, I said that the Sword of Eden was placed into a stone by an old hooded man. That's probably the Isu that represents Odin. Like, we don't know, it may be Jupiter, it's the big honcho. It may be Jupiter from the other Isu, we don't know. Or it may be an, a new Isu that is called Odin. I mean, who knows? <laughs> Jupiter and Minerva and Juno are called by their god names, so why not there be an Izu called Odin? I'm okay with that. It's the Izu. They can do whatever they want. So, And I believe that through those visions, Eivor will be guided to an in-world location to find the spear. And the same might happen with the sword. Actually, if they end up doing that for the sword... I'll take it. I'm not going to be happy with it, I think. But I mean, not as happy as I would have been if I did that. And then at the end, you start... Like, you go to the location and it opens. It's a cave. And you're like, okay. Moss, vegetation, like... Rocks dripping everywhere. Like, you start walking, okay, this is pretty cool. You start to see the easy aesthetic, like the pillars and all, not the lights. And then you start reaching the end, or the center chamber, and you start to see the rock, with something sticking out of it. And you start to slowly realize what that is. That would have been so much more impactful than showing the bloody piece on the trailer! Give me a second. I'm gonna move forward. So, the next point I wanna to touch upon is really something that I feel shouldn't have to be celebrated, but at this point we really have to celebrate it. It's guaranteed assassinations. It was revealed through an assess accessibility post on the official Ubisoft site, I believe, that there will be an accessibility option to turn on guaranteed assassinations. So, no minigame for the assassinations, and I claim right here, right now, I pledge myself to turn that on as soon as I boot the game, because that's how Assassin's Creed is meant to be played. The challenge of Assassin's Creed is not to, to be boiled down to a minigame, when you try to assassinate someone, the challenge is to get to the target and forge yourself the situation and the opportunities to stealth kill the target. Because if you try to assassinate the target and you fail just because you failed a minigame and initiate a combat situation anyway, then what's the point when you could just initiate combat anyway? Sure, 
if you fail an assassination, you still take a load of damage from them. But that's not how it should be. The fantasy dictates that hidden blade kills are fatal. One hit KOs. And as I said, the challenge, the challenge of stealth kills is not the kill itself, is forging the opportunity to make the kill. So, if you navigate flawlessly through an enemy encampment, you position yourself above your target and you have a shot, you should be guaranteed and damn sure that that shot will count. And that's why I'm very happy that this is an option. I'm sad that it had to come to the point for it to be an option and not a feature. But I'm happy that it's back and I'm happy that who wants that those who want to play with it have the opportunity to do so. That's why I'm happy for it. Now, I want to move just to a small little topic that I really, really, really want to want to touch upon. It's it's America. Yeah, it was revealed on the Deep Dive trailer and it was confirmed in multiple instances and interviews that yes, Eivor will be going to America at some point, which I am pleasantly surprised. It was a point of content of um, of uh, guessing at the beginning of the marketing campaign because Vikings did went to America, only they did it a bit later than what this game is set. I think about two hundred years later, give or take. So yeah, Leif Erikson. And his crew went to America all those years ago. And and I actually quite like... I don't remember where he said this. It was either on the Access the Animus interview or the JV interview. That uh, Darby McDavid said, Oh, well, we know, of course, that Leif Erikson uh, went there like all those years later. But, you know, the Animus is always the live the true history. And we thought... We can shove A4 going to America, and you know what? I'm okay with it. Like, it may not be historically accurate, but why not? Maybe they can paint it, oh, you know, it was an unrecorded voyage or something. They, they were fleeing from someone or something, and they wanted to go there and end up discovering a whole new continent uh, and a whole new people, and there are natives there. As we know, that they, 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 they were. And it appears that there will be some sort of interaction with them. And I, I cannot wait to see what sort of connections will be made with the future games. Mainly Assassin's Creed and perhaps the whole Kenway saga. But more Assassin's Creed 3 and Rogue. Because, you know, Rogue has the Viking armor and the Viking swords and all that. And Assassin's Creed 3 is set in America. So it's just a small tidbit. More places to explore, and I, I was hyped when I saw that section. I was like, "That's America. We're going to America," and I was like, "That's so cool." Uh, of course, uh, Vinland, as it came to be known then, and as a huge fan of the manga and anime of Vinland Saga, I was just stoked when I saw that. And now, I cannot take out of my mind to make Eivor as similar to Thorfinn as I can. You know, daggers are in the game, so I can do it. I can do it. Okay. I can't believe I'm going to do this, but I'm going to end the video on gender choices because now I want to talk about the overall presentation of the game. Like, I haven't played it for myself, as of course. <laughs> but if Ubisoft wants to invite me on the next games, uh, you know, this, this play session, uh, you know, you know how to contact me. I'm, I'm here all week. So, but yeah, I haven't played it for myself, so I cannot speak from experience. But judging from people's reactions, this game will be maybe not as much, but quite divisive as Odyssey, as Odyssey was. Odyssey was, of course, the pinnacle of the vision within the series. Valhalla will not be as such, but I think that it will be... There will be some room for controversy and division within the game's fan base. The game looks a bit better from the other, the other gameplay sessions, the other demo builds. 
there are still a lot of, of issues though and honest the side content that was shown it just seems to be taking the piss out of everything like like the the husher from the fight group that speaks in birds like the guy's constantly flighting or something i don't know and then there's the the one with the two viking brother two norse brothers that are trying to set up their home on fire to practice raiding <laughs> Like, again, these are a small, minute representation of the overall experience of the game, so we do not know. The problem is that they are focusing so much on the Viking stuff that they are not showing enough assassin assassiny stuff. Like, players who wanted to get any assassiny stuff out of this game had to go out of their way to get it. Like... We saw people finding a bureau in Leather Chesterchire, the, 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 you know, the, you know the place, and then you have the bureau in your in your settlement, which, of which you can do nothing within the demo, but, but will be able to do so in the game. Again, it's a point that has been touched upon and upon and upon so many times that it almost feels stupid for me to keep saying this, but. We want more assassin marketing stuff. Like, give us a trailer where Eivor, where it shows Eivor interacting with Hytem, with Basim, with maybe interacting with a target. Or hell, give me more interactions with Alfred the Great. Like, Alfred the Great is being hyped as this big ass character in the game. And the only thing, we didn't even hear the man speak. Except in the fucking reveal trailer, when I just swore for the first time on a video, bloody hell, yes, I did it. And we only heard the man in the freaking reveal trailer. <sighs> like, we saw him nonchalantly sit in a chair like this, and then standing on the open field, and that's it. And he's being hyped as this big player in the game, as this three-dimensional character, grey character, who no clear allegiance is on each side, but his own side, and the man is not being shown in favour of epic raiding movement, which we've already saw. And frankly, the more we see of it, the sicker we grow of it. Because old fans don't want to see that. And even the new fans, they might get bored with it. If you only show them the same thing. I imagine if I was a new fan of Assassin's Creed and I was only in it for the epic raiding saga adventure, which I'm not. But if I was, I would be like, ah, oh, okay, show us something else. Like, no more epic raid thing. Just show me like a small assassination contract or something. Show me a freaking... Confession room. It doesn't have to be a big one. Show me a small one. Just show me Eivor in the black room. Which is not black room, but it was supposed to be the white room. But now it's not black. It's the Aurora room. Aurora room. I'll call it the Aurora room. Aurora room. That's too many hours for English. That's too many hours. The Aurora room. Oh, bloody hell. The confession room. Show me a confession room with just Eivor kneeling down to a target. And I don't know. Just... Picking the medallion, because we know the Order of the Ancient Stars are going to have medallions on them. And just show him, pick up a, pick up the medallion, and say something to the poor guy. That's it. That's all we need. Like, there's still time. You can make it. Hell, the PS5 launches on a month. on From here to a month in, in Europe. Bloody hell. But the game releases a bit earlier, so... Show us that. There's still time for that. And... I I can't believe I'm actually doing this, but I'm going to end this video on gender choice. So yeah, so if any of you guys are still here, welcome to probably the part that's going to screw me completely if this video ever gets enough views or anything. Like, guys, my dear friends, my dear viewers, 
if you saw my other videos on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, especially the first one that I that I did, not the POEs one, because I don't think I mentioned the the gender there. And if you if you go back to my older Odyssey videos, I did two of them. One of them touched very heavily on the protagonist choice. I do not like gender choice. I'm not alone on this. I'm sure of it. I'm I'm not alone on this thought. And I think that it no matter what Darby McDavid says or any member of the team, no matter how many times they say, oh, you're going to swallow your words when you see what the story has in store for you. You're going to swallow them and you're going to be ashamed of thinking that. And I'm like, no, I will not. I will most definitely be not. I might be impressed. But I will not say, oh, well, no, it's a good thing they went with this. No, it really is. No, I won't. They will have to go above and beyond to make us believe and to make us change our minds as to why having both choices being canon work within the lore. Like, I know there's a the whole possibility of Layla's animus is just compensating for the lack of DNA and she's as the heir of memory she's witnessing you know possible past events the way the East do with the future events Layla's animus does with the past honestly they can do whatever they want with it now the whole mythological saga as it's been commonly known is already doomed with regards to Layla and her animus. Like, no matter what they do, it won't feel well within the overall lore. It will feel, it will probably feel well to Layla's lore, you know, Layla's little adventure with Bayek, Cassandra, and now Eivor. But to me, I sincerely doubt it that it will fit that well within. I mean, it will fit, but it will seem contrived, is what I'm trying to say. And I really hope that Ubisoft learns, and I'm telling Ubisoft as a company, not to any individual person working on it. Because there are people in Ubisoft who are of the same mindset as, as what I'm going to tell. Ubisoft needs to... Get off his high horse and just freaking commit to one. There's proof plenty in the video game industry that female characters are not only wanted as playable characters, not only do they sell because they do, Horizon Zero Dawn, The Last of Us Part 2, just to name a few, send their regards. And the fans themselves want a female player character. A female, a full-on female protagonist with no hindrances from the story to have, or development cycle, to have a male choice. Give us a female protagonist with her own dedicated development cycle without having a freaking male choice attached to it. Ubisoft, the higher-ups at Ubisoft, they need to freaking commit. They need to change their freaking mentality that women do not sell. And I hope, as, may, as do many others, that with these controversies that the company has faced, that they'll be able to change their freaking minds. Assassin's Creed does not need to be an, a choose-your-own-character RPG. We had, like, what, 10 games that, for better or worse, to prove that a single protagonist works. And we don't need... Sure, they were all male, but having played Syndicate... Fairly recently, having played it from start to finish on PC, 
I know that the story is hindered by Jacob being in it. Or at least by Jacob being playable for the majority of the game. It's so clear that Evie was the one meant to be. And honestly, Jacob's role is an hindrance to the story. As a playable character. As a side character, well, yes, yeah, sure, he could have worked if he was given less screen time. Because the biggest flaw of that game is the choice. Or the illusion of choice. Because they don't give you a choice. You have to do both. It's not a choice. Like, you can choose in the open world to be with Evie or Jacob. But you don't really have a choice. It's an illusion of choice. Because you have to do everything. And... Honestly, possibly, apart from the Pearl Hathaway sequence... All the others could just could just have Evie replace Jacob and the story probably wouldn't change that much. Sure, minor tweaks would have to be done, like the whole crashing the economy thing. But that could still happen, just have it not be a direct consequence of killing Two Penny. Just have it be something else, like Two Penny had an associate who stole the plagues and I don't know just I'm not here to discuss a syndicate remake not 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 today not today maybe one day but not today the gender choice and the fact that and here's the thing they keep saying oh both are canon and you'll understand why wink wink but they're just not showing us the marketing does not reflect that you had the reveal trailer with May Labor. Only months afterwards did they did they ship the same trailer with female Avor. Avor's fake trailer, I think, was the only one that swapped between the two, if I'm remembering correctly. I'm not sure of that even. Like and even the recent Deep Life trailer, I'm not sure it shown it showed much of female. It showed a bit, maybe when they were showing the, the choice the gender choice. And, yeah, like, just to conclude, because the video is already long enough and I have a class in in a bit, I, I need, I, I'm on Zoom classes today, so I, I use this time to, to, to put this little video together a little, as he says, as the video probably has half an hour now. Um, I am excited for Valhalla, please do not mistake my harsh words for lack of excitement. I am excited. It will not be a launch day purchase because there's no money for that, but it will probably be a Christmas gift, if nothing else from myself, from me to me, if no one else decides to offer it to me. I'll probably buy it on Christmas, and yeah, it will be a long while before I play it, so... I will have to try hard not to spoil me because I really like to go fresh to this game. Like that's that's one of the reasons I wasn't I wasn't sure if I was going to to do any other Valhalla videos because I'm not gonna play the game on launch, so I will not bring anything new around that time. And even now this is nothing new, this is just my opinion. So if you guys like my opinions and like to hear me rambling on about, well, I thank you. I thank you a lot. But uh, yes, I don't know if I'm going to say anything more on Valhalla until launch or even after it. I might do a video on it after I finish it, like way down the line in January or February. Like, probably, I can probably get it done in January. I'm on vacation from university. I'm, ho I'm on holidays from, from university from December to almost February. So, yes. Assuming I pass all my course units, that is, I can relax for, this, for the holiday season and for January. So, yeah, I'll have plenty of time to, to go a Viking, as, as the kids would say. And I'll probably bring my thoughts on it in the meantime. But for now and for a while, this channel will be 
will be focused on Hogwarts Legacy a bit more. The spellcasting video is being worked on and I would like to have it out this week or at the very least early next week. So I will have to think about it and actually get up to do it. So yeah, I hope you have I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. My voice is starting to fail me, so I will end this video now. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe to the channel for more. I'll see you guys next time and bye bye.